Hi everyone, um, my name is Simon Courtenage. Um, I'm the course leader for Advanced Software Engineering. Um, okay, that's a nice picture of me. Um, uh, I'm the, the principal lecturer here in the Department of Computer Science and my background has been in um, uh, web development, distributed systems and nowadays I also do a little bit of research in um, the use of technology in, in education. Um, so I'm the course leader. Um, the joint head of the Educational Technology Research Group and I, I also teach one of the modules on the course as well, one of the core options which we'll um, just mention a bit later, uh, Advanced Software Design. Um, other members of the course team, there's um, Paul Howells who teaches Concurrency and Parallelism, um, uh, Phil Truoga who is responsible for Enterprise Development and also Mobile Application Development, and then we also have um, Maria Chandragiani, um, uh, Gabor Terstiansky, um, and other members of staff as well. First of all, I want to just tackle the question, why study at the University of Westminster? Well, um, first of all, um, on the master's degrees, we have small student-centred sessions. So typically in a, in a lab, there, there might be um, anything between five to ten sort of groups of students working with a tutor uh, on a problem so it's very very much focused on the student. Um, the environment is generally so supportive and friendly um, uh, hopefully inspiring as well and you'll, you'll, we aim to sort of provide you with a wide range of topics relevant um, on this course to, to modern software engineering. We have fit modern labs uh, and facilities for example we have a uh, modern Apple labs for the mobile application development, um, sort of quite nice sort of PC labs uh, and so on. And we also have excellent support services, for example, academic skills development. If you were, if your language is uh, other than English, then we, we have little sort of courses like um, writing uh, English as um, uh, for academic uses uh, and so on. And if you're, if you're EU or home student, then we also have things like careers advice sessions as well. Also, um, we're based in central London, so we're very close to lots of really nice um, sites uh, and facilities. Um, at the top um, left of, your, of this slide, you'll see a picture of our particular building. Um, that's where we are at the moment. With the, that big tower behind us is the, the British Telecom Tower, which is quite a, a fairly sort of important landmark. And on the map below, you'll see a little marker that shows exactly where we are. And down the bottom of the slide, you can see some of the major sites in central London, like um, the National Gallery, the South Bank Centre, and right down the bottom, Big Ben. Those are all about sort of 20 minutes to half an hour walk away. Also on the slide, I've also put in um, a few of the sort of um, um, the software development events that happen around central London. These all come from a site called meetup.com. And there are a lot of um, uh, tech companies, um, developer organisations in central London um, who are often organising events relating to a particular subject area which you may find sort of very interesting. And, and last of all, London is a very multicultural uh, environment. Wherever you come from in the world, you'll find something relating to your home environment uh, somewhere in London. Okay, so when can you start the, the MSc uh, Advanced Software Engineering? Well, we do uh, a one-year full-time degree, which runs uh, September to August, um, and a part-time degree for home and EU students, which also has a September start, which we can be taken somewhere between two and five years. But they both, full-time and part-time, have September starts. Unfortunately, we don't take any sort of uh, January applicants. Admission requirements. Well, first of all, um, if your education is in a language other than English, then you'll need to demonstrate uh, proficiency in English. And we accept an um, IELTS score of 6.5 overall, uh, and at least 6 uh, in each element. For your first, uh, first degree, we need at least 2.2 or equivalent in a computing or software engineering degree or closely related subject. So it may be, for example, computing and uh, something else. You should submit a completed application form via the UK Pass website 
and we consider applications uh, all through the year. So um, up to sort of uh, July, August, we'll take applications. The aim of the course um, is to extend and expand your knowledge of software engineering um, and its use in different areas. What we've tried to do with the course is um, build on your undergraduate computing or software engineering knowledge by um, helping you to apply it in a number of fairly specialist but interesting and um, important areas. For example, big data is perhaps one of those topics, uh, perhaps big data combined with machine learning. We also have things like uh, cloud computing, uh, mobile and enterprise development and security as well. So we try to give you theoretical knowledge, um, show you how to build applications, practice software engineering, but pushing into these new areas, and also give you practical experience as well. <clears throat> uh, this slide shows um, some of the topics that you'll be offered as part of the degree. Um, and you'll see on the right-hand column that we've put which ones are core, in other words, which subjects you have to study as part of the degree, and which ones are optional, which ones you can choose to do. So the core options are things like advanced software design, which is something I teach, um, which is about um, the design of software using um, formal notation, uh, in this case UML, and also things like uh, software testing frameworks and software quality metrics. And you've got subjects like enterprise development, concurrency and parallelism. You might think of these as fairly traditional software engineering subjects. And then down the bottom, we've also got research methods um, and the project as well. And then we've got a whole list of sort of optional subjects. Um, some to do with mobile computing, um, others to do with security, others sort of uh, centred around big data uh, and subjects related to that. And so that there are themes that you could perhaps sort of specialise in or you may want to take a subject from particular themes, so one mobile, one big data, one security and so on to get a sort of fairly widespread. You have to do the three core modules plus research methods in the project and then you get a choice of three options from the, the, the lists that are given there. We run in uh, two semesters, um, the first semester October to December, um, the second January to April. And over the two semesters, you'll do the three core modules, research methods, and your three options. Um, there'll be exams if the module contains exams at the end of each semester, and then the project is done over between June and September. Usually the hand-in date is sometime mid-September, um, you should shortly be followed by an oral viva for the project. Okay, so um, how are you going to be assessed? Well, we have a variety of different types of assessment. Some modules will be um, what we call um, pure coursework. So written reports, practical assignments, um, coding, um, development and so on. Some will have a mix of coursework and final exams. Um, the exams being at the end of the semester when you do the module. Um, there's also uh, one or two modules that have oral exams, although this is primarily for the project. So after you submitted the project in mid-September, you'll be assessed um, using both the written report that you hand in for the project plus, plus uh, an oral exam with your supervisor and another member of staff. Most of the work is individual but there are uh, a few bits of work which are group-based, where you'll be working in small groups on a, a, perhaps a project-related task, a, a mini-project, for example. Um, just about the project, just want to give a couple of examples of kind of things students have done for past projects. Um, last year, for example, we had uh, two students doing uh, one uh, a project on procedural maze generation for 2D dungeon style games. So there he was interested in uh, developing an algorithm for um, generating the maze, the dungeon maze uh, procedurally. Um, another student had a very interesting project about detecting emotion in audio recordings. So for example, was someone very angry? Was someone very happy? 
um, some um, what's another emotion calm uh, or elated and excited that kind of thing using using machine learning um, a couple of years ago someone else did a project on automatically classifying uh, web documents using um, medical semantics so they could work out for example what area of medicine um, a particular web page was was discussing uh, based on the content of the web page and uh, what we call an ontology um, a formal structured um, set of um, uh, semantics about uh, uh, medicine and r related subjects so um, if you want to find out more this is uh, my contact details uh, my email address there cortez at so a slight typo westminster.ac.uk and my web page and there's the email for, for the admissions team uh, as well. Okay, uh, thanks uh, for everyone presenting today. Um, what we're going to do is we'll take a few minutes break, but before we do that, I just wanted to talk about the student finance uh, postgraduate loans for home and EU students. So this is a relatively new um, uh, initiative that was started last year. Um, so as it currently stands for this academic year, uh, UK and EU students can apply for this. Um, and it's a loan, um, and it's a loan of up to ten thousand pounds, which is paid uh, over uh, over three different periods in the year, um, and are paid directly to you. So you would have to arrange the payment to the university, but um, obviously having a ten thousand pound loan is very useful towards paying for the masters. So um, if you do want to uh, take a look at that, I'm going to include a link right now uh, for you so you can uh, look at how to apply and more information on how to apply for the postgraduate loan. Right, so we've got a few questions here. Um, so the first question is uh, regarding accommodation. So we have um, a range of accommodation available, um, some specifically only for postgraduate, uh, uh, for postgraduate students, um, so they're based all around uh, central London and we also have some spaces in uh, Wembley as well. So um, depending on how soon you get in, you might have a few options available to you. So what will happen is when you make the application, the, the accommodation portal opens in April um, and you'll be able to take a look at the options that you have uh, and then apply from there. Um, so what I've done is I've included a link to send to you um, and it should be in the chat box now. Um, with student accommodation details. So uh, if you are looking for accommodation, make sure to click that link so you can see the different options available. And then once you've made your application and you've um, got your offer, you can then start to apply for your, um, your accommodation here. Um, next question is generally about um, international qualifications. So, uh, so we've had quite a few people asking um, what qualifications um, from internationally we accept. Um, so there's a wide range, we can't cover them all, but um, on our website, which, and I'm including a link here now for you, um, there's a section in the international pages called Where Are You From? And from there you can look at the individual countries and what um, qualifications uh, we normally look for when we apply, uh, when, when, when we receive applications for these master's courses. Um, so, if they don't appear, uh, make sure to email the admissions team uh, as they will be able to uh, as they will be able to answer those questions and be able to check your application um, uh, before before you make a full application. Or uh, you can just try and make an application straight away. We'll be able to make an assessment from there. And um, another question here about um, a, uh, how to apply. Um, so. For the full-time uh, courses, you will need to apply via um, UK Pass or UCAS Postgraduate. Um, so that's similar to UCAS in that you uh, choose your university and you fill out um, an application form and that will be sent to us. Um, if you are applying for part-time, um, those uh, are done through our in internal uh, site. So what you would need to do is go to the course page and click on the apply now button and that will take you to the uh, postgraduate part-time application page. And I will also include uh, in the link in the chat box uh, information on how to apply. Um, and the final question uh, today 
is about scholarships. So again, we've got another we've got another link for you here. Um, so the scholarships, um, the deadline is getting very close. It will be uh, it will be approaching uh, end of April, and you'll need to have an application with us uh, and an offer for us. Um, before you can actually make your application for the scholarship. So you'll need to apply right away uh, to, in order to be in time for the, uh, for the course. So, um, yeah, and, and um, we normally look at things like academic ability, uh, the amount of um, uh, the financial need, and what you're planning on doing with the degree uh, in respect to kind of um, your career and kind of, especially for the larger scholarships, making the world a better place. Um, so that's a large part of what scholarships are about and you need to send that in uh, right, um, you need to kind of get working on that right away if you're looking for a September start. Um, oh, we've just had a question in um, about uh, would um, the Interaction Design and Computing course uh, be suitable for someone who's actually studying multimedia undergraduate this year? Um, so, um, as uh, this attendee has noted, there's very similar modules, but obviously as part of the course it is a more advanced level. Um, and if you are looking to kind of go into doing the uh, interaction and design computing course after doing um, a similar course for on the undergraduate side, um, I, we would recommend um, A, making application, B, um, talking uh, directly to Ashif uh, as well, because uh, his email is there uh, available for you, and uh, he will best be able to uh, uh, kind of assess whether that would be the best thing. Um, and also, uh, I don't know if this uh, attendee is actually from the University of Westminster or from another university, but obviously, it depends on which area you're looking to go into within interaction design. As, uh, as Ashif as said, it's a very um, broad uh, range of options that you can choose from, as well as um, kind of the entrepreneurial sides of the course. So that brings us to the end of the questions. I'd like to thank the presenters, I'd like to thank the course leaders, um, I'd like to thank everyone who attended and those who have asked a question. So um, without further ado, I will bring the session to a close and please do get in touch if you are interested in applying for any of these courses. Thanks.